Hello everyone, this is an editing Megan checking in. The purpose of this segment is to start a new series. I'm not really sure what the title is going to be yet, but I guess like the working title is going to be uh, Fan Spotlight, where we do features on fan covers, fan art, fan fiction, and even old website archives. <clears throat> like fan website archives, um, think GeoCities, Angel Fire, that sort of thing. And part of the reason I wanted to do this is because of the idea of impermanence. In Japanese, there's actually a term for this called mono no aware. It's it's a theme that comes up a lot in the tale of Genji, but I think this theme is also relevant in the modern era. Well, they say that everything on the internet is permanent. Sometimes it kind of isn't, you know? Think of like GeoCities America that's been discontinued years ago. Um, it's just not a thing anymore. And as big corporations buy out smaller websites and restructuring and things go on, you know, things disappear. and. Part of my motivation for starting this series is to create a record. So basically, my motivation is to capture these old websites as well as my initial thoughts and reactions. And I, I think this is a really great way to do it because it's much more interactive than just like going through the Wayback Machine and just looking at things on your own. Also, with every feature, I always try to reach out to the person to get permission. So with today's feature, I did try to reach out to the person, but their email was disabled. It was bounced back to me. So yeah, um, having said that, if by chance anyone wants any content removed, they don't want their tween and teen years of fandom featured on the channel for potentially a wider audience to see. I completely understand. There is that aspect of it, but I also think the historical aspect is really important too, so that future generations are able to study us. These topics got so heavy so quickly, but I think they're so, so important too and it can be a lot of fun. I hope that we can have a lot of fun with this series. And this first episode is kind of all over the place because I f was reviewing my footage and I found that it was corrupted. I was supposed to have a face cam alongside the uh, screen recording so that we could talk in real time. But it's corrupted, so there's just the screen recording with my voiceover, unfortunately. But I just wanted to kind of clarify what has been happening, um, what's happened, and so I just wanted to have this like preamble before we start. But I'm just kind of rambling, but yeah, yeah. So food has arrived. Now we have our melon soda. And we'll have waffle. And it comes with a cherry. So look at that. So maybe like we can rename the segment like coffee and fan spotlight time. Like some of those like crime YouTubers are like 
coffee and crime time. Um, I know Stephanie Harlow was doing that for a while, and then I know we're getting like smell and soda everywhere. Um, and then like some other YouTubers were doing it. It's not really a new idea, but like. So, uh, <clears throat> um, so we're going to change our keywords to the Moffat's Day Geocities. Yes, um, um, so here it is, um, so we're greeted with this front page, we have, uh, looks like some fan art of Scott Moffat, and I know you guys are going to be very surprised to see GeoCities. Yeah, I was surprised too that GeoCities is still running in some countries. Um, it's been long defunct in America. I'm not sure when they discontinued GeoCities in America, but that was quite some time ago. Maybe I can put the information like here. But yeah, yeah. Um, so WS, uh, what country is that? So let's find out together. Uh, WS website country. Where is this based in? <coughs> So then we get a Wikipedia page. Uh, .ws is the internet country code for a top level domain. CCTLD for Samoa. Uh, so let's open that Wikipedia article up. Uh, sponsor is the government of Samoa. Uh, so we're going to jump to Google Maps. Uh, depending on what comes up on Google Maps, I might have to block out my history because of privacy, things like that. But um, so we're going to look up Samoa. So it's an island country. It's basically in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. No, could it be a territory of America? So this could be like another deep dive in itself for sure. But there it is. Here's my location in Japan. Pretty neat. So we're going to close that. 
Yeah, so very cool. Um, GeoCities is still running in some countries. I think it's super neat. Um, and we have some updates on the front page. Uh, it looks like right after, um, like following the breakup of the Moffats, uh, they had two separate bands. Um, I think... And feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's like Clint and Bob, they were in another band called Push. Um, there's some information there about the old Moffat's Mansion. Um, with all the information that we see on these websites, I would absolutely take it with a grain of salt. Um, <laughs> there's really no way to verify what people say. Um, well. There's ways to do that, but, you know, um, never, ever believe everything you read on the internet is what I'm trying to say. But, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, the view, the website view is not great because, yeah, we're on mobile and, oh my goodness, the, my battery's running out so quick. <laughs> wow, um. But, like, maybe if we run out of time because of my battery issues, we could come back to this. I think this is super fun. I love it. Um, but on the desktop view, there was, like, a sidebar with stuff that you could click on. And, like, we may have to do this project at home as fun as it would be to do this on location if we're having issues like this it may not work um so what do you think do you have any fan stories to share with us did you ever run a fan website back during the late 1990s to early 2000s <clears throat> um, so I was a little bit late to the party. Um, during the 90s, I didn't have a home computer, but I did have access to the computer lab over the years. Um, when I was in elementary school, I believe my school was quite underfunded as it was because... The computers that we had in the lab, um, so these were my first computers, basically. The Macintosh Classic and the Apple II. Um, the Apple II? Uh, the Apple II was a black and white computer. Maybe we can, like, put a picture on screen uh, for the younger generations who may not know. But, um... Yeah, we had the Apple II. They were black and white. And then uh, we had the Macintosh Classic. These computers were in color. Um, so most of the most of the computers in that computer lab were the Apple IIs. They were all black and white with just a handful of Macintosh Classics were in color and I remember as children we used to fight over the color computers all the time. Um, here's another view of the drink. It's very cute. Here's the logo. Yeah, so uh, that was my first computer experience. Um, we had Netscape Navigator, which was very, very, very slow. Um, what else? Uh, we also had dot matrix printers. <laughs> this new generation... I don't think has ever experienced the dot matrix printer because, oh my goodness, they were loud. They were loud. Um, 
So basically you have your package of printer paper, they're individual sheets, you can just take it out, it's whatever. But back in the day, all the papers were like accordion style. Um, so maybe I can post more pictures here um, so to give you a better vis visualization. But we had, it's like accordion style and then it was perforated. So you had to take the paper that you needed tear it at the perforation and put it in the printer each side of the paper had these rows of dots and then you had to match the dotted holes with the nuts on the printer if that makes sense <laughs> and yeah so there's that and then when you went to print you could hear it printing every line <laughs> and it was just so loud, so obnoxious, and the paper jams were the absolute worst. <laughs> um, once you printed out your report or whatever it was that you were printing, you had to have one more step where you had to tear the paper at the purper, purper. You had to tear the paper at the perforation on each side, and then you could submit your homework or report or whatever it was, and then. Like, as children, we'd make tiny little accordions with those slips of paper that we... Okay, outro. I think the series has the potential to adapt and change. We could definitely t talk about other topics in this series where we just, like, sit down, have a coffee, and have a conversation about um, past uh, archives, or it could be anything, really. Um, I love the idea. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, share, all that stuff. Thank you so much for stopping by. And we'll see you next time.